Judas Priest is back after six years with Invincible Shield. So today we're going to see if they deliver the goods. First I'll do a quick history, talk about the singles, album tracks, then I'll give my final sc thoughts and score. So let's go. Judas Priest may be the only classic heavy metal band from the past 50 years that is still making great music. The last time we got an album from them was back in 2018 when they released the album Firepower. This was one of the best albums of their career. When I heard this, I was surprised at how a band that has been around for almost 50 years can release an album like this so late in their career. Almost every other metal band that has been around uh, since they started are no longer making music, but Judas Priest are still making great music. A lot has happened in the past years. K.K. Downing created his own version of the band and even released two albums of his own in that time period. We also had a three-year global pandemic. Many other fans were saying, we need another album. They were even inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But then, on the night of October 7, 2023, they were getting ready to get on stage to play the Power Trip Festival, and they revealed that they had a new album coming out. It was called Invincible Shield. Then on October 13th, they released the first single called Panic Attack. The first impression of Panic Attack was that they were continuing the sound they had on Firepower. The song opens with a melodic guitar intro, which was not that bad. But once the main riff kicked in, I immediately knew that this was going to be a good song. Rob Halford still sings in top form. The guitars sound great and the song was very memorable. I think it had a great opening single and uh, a great way to kick off the album. The next single was Trial by Fire. It was released on November 17, 2023. thought it was very similar to Panic Attack. I think it might be because it has lead guitars in the intro. And that goes right into that main guitar riff. After spending some time with the song, I think it might be better than Panic Attack. I like it because Rob Halford sings in a lower range and I felt that this one had some better melodies. I also like the guitar tone and the main riff. The song is not very fast paced, so I also like that aspect of it. This was probably my favorite of the singles. Crown of Horns was the third single released on January 19th of this year. The intro reminded me of classic Van Halen, but then the song took off. It was one of the slower tracks. I liked the melody and the guitars. Out of all the singles, this was the most accessible and radio friendly of them all. Thought it was a good song. On the other hand, though, the song had some heavy parts, especially the guitar riff that comes in the middle of the song. I thought that was one of the best riffs. The fourth single was Serpent and the King. It was released on February 22nd, 2024. The first few seconds of the song reminded me of the late 70s period, but the vocals sound like they came from that Painkiller album. Uh, out of the four singles, this was the heaviest, maybe one of the heaviest that they had done in a while. There's another heavier song, I'll get to that later. I really like the guitar riff during the breakdown that goes into the solo. This is the band letting us know that they are still not afraid just to get really heavy. Let's talk about the title track, Invincible Shield. They just posted a music video for the song. It shows the band playing together. You can see all the members in this video. I thought it was a strong track. I heard some elements of classic Judas Priest in the sound. I like the guitar tone. I like this whole guitar tone of the album in general. They have some awesome harmonized guitar parts, and I think uh, this one has one of the best solos. Then there is Devil in Disguise. I thought this was one of the more radio-friendly songs. It's still heavy. It's still heavy metal. It's still Judas Priest. It moves a little slower, but it has an awesome groove. Halford's vocals are more melodic. The guitar sound is just as heavy. It was a great song. I can't say there's any filler on this album either. Uh, this whole album rocks so far. Gates of Hell is next. The intro had a classic early 80s feel from that like Screaming for Vengeance or... Defenders of the Faith period. I read one comment comparing the intro to Cold Blooded from Redeemer of Souls. It was another great song, had a classic sound. I read another comment, they, they called it like a throwback sound with a modern feel. I thought that was a good description of the song, or even the album in general. The next song is As God Is My Witness. This was one of the heavier songs that moved at high speed. I got a painkiller vibe from the song. I also read a few comments saying the same I also thought that the song was a good example of how the band can make a song be very heavy and melodic at the same time. I thought it was one of the stronger tracks, maybe the heaviest song, along with Serpent and the King, as I was saying before. Get From Reality is the next song. I think out of all the songs, this one really stands out for being different. 
It has this like sludgy, almost Black Sabbath type of feel. I'm not saying it's very slow, but it does give me those vibes. I even read one comment saying that this reminded them of Rob's old band called Fight. And now that I listen to it, I hear that it does have that kind of groove metal sound. I also like the use of the clean and distorted guitars. I think that adds some more texture to the song. The next song is called Sons of Thunder, and this is the sequel to God of Thunder by Kiss. And uh, that's a joke. I had to put in a dad joke at some point in the video, but it has nothing to do with that. But it's a cool song. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Three minutes long, just traditional heavy metal. There's not much more to say about it. It would, be, uh, it would probably go over well in a live setting. I think uh, it has that chorus where Rob sings the main vocals, then there's backing vocals. So I thought that was pretty cool. Giants in the Sky is the last album track from the standard version, and this one is all about the great musicians who have died over the years. He doesn't mention anyone specific in the lyrics, but we can assume it's about people like Lemmy from Motorhead and Ronnie James Dio. I thought it was another good track. It's a little slower, still very heavy. It's a really good song, it's just straightforward, heavy metal. They added in like one little twist. There's one part in the song I really like comes in at three minutes. They play this Spanish style guitar solo. I believe it's on an acoustic guitar. I really like it because it kind of shows their, they want to like do something like a little different. There are three bonus tracks. Let's talk about that because they were very uh, strong tracks. The Spanish Smart, they have two versions of the CD and the vinyl. The standard edition doesn't have the last three songs. So you have to pay a little extra to have them on your physical copies. So I saw this on Amazon, and the Deluxe Edition was a few dollars more. So I'll probably spend a little more just to get the Deluxe Edition, just because I like these next three songs. I think they're really good. Fight for Your Life is the first bonus track. It's a great song. It's a throwback to that 70s sound. And I'm thinking it goes all the way back to like Sinatra Sin or Sad Wings of Destiny. It has a bluesy rock sound. It still captures that classic heavy metal feel with modern production. Vicious Circle is another uh, classic heavy metal song. This one has a cool chugging sound in a guitar. Rob sounds just as good as ever. The song is both heavy and melodic. I like the sounds of the twin guitars on this one. The Lodger is the last song. This one's very laid back. For some reason, I think it would work as like a James Bond uh, movie uh, song or <laughs> something like that. It just has that song, that sound to it. It kind of like takes you back to the 70s. It's different. It's not very heavy. It's a little laid back. Like that 70s style when they were like varying their sound a little more or something like that. And I think this is actually my favorite of the three bonus tracks. Now for my final thoughts. I thought it was about as good as Firepower. As of right now, I can't decide which one's better. But this means that the two albums will be ranking very high. I cannot believe that Judas Priest is the only metal band to have albums released 50 years apart. The album is solid and there's not really any filler tracks on it. My score is an 8.5 out of 10. It may go up after I spend some more time with it. Check out my review of Firepower. I'm going to stick that right there. Please like this video. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you have not already. I will see you in the next one.